Good morning, everybody. It's the first thing seamstress. I'm sorry that I have not done a video in several weeks. I think where I left off was showing you a bunch of fabric that I had bought from a thrift store. Um, since that time, I bought more. I bought, I think, um, let's see, three pieces. Um, the last two I bought uh, Wednesday when I had to go to Virginia for an eye appointment. And uh, I had switched ophthalmologist because the ophthalmologist that I had in my state was retiring. He did my LASIK in 1999. Um, I loved him. I just thought he was so talented. Um, so I continued to go to him. But now I live in a different place from where I used to live when I started going there. Um, and it was so much further away. And since he was retiring, he was only there maybe one or two days a week. And eventually he was not going to be there at all. So I found a, an ophthalmologist um, just across the, the line from North Carolina and went for my first appointment. And one of the last things my prior doctor had told me was that um, I, my, reading, my uh, eye pressure readings had been high for quite a while, but apparently uh, my optic nerve was intact. But the last time I went, he said that he could see a little bit of an effect on my optic nerve. He gave me a peripheral vision test. And if you've never had one, it's really interesting because you look into this tunnel-like thing and you have to look straight ahead and click a button while you're looking straight ahead if you see a, a dot light up anywhere in the periphery. Um, but I passed that test, but I was supposed to follow up with him in six months. And so instead I just followed up with a new um, medical doctor. And they did some extra testing and looked at everything. And it turns out that um, my readings were 16, which was down. And uh, some other tests they found, for example, I had a, I know you didn't plan on this listening to my eye history, but they found that my cornea is thick, which is protective against glaucoma. Who knew that? So, um, and I asked the, um, it's a woman doctor, I said, is it possible that I'll never have glaucoma? And she said, oh, absolutely. But I still want to see you every six months. So that's the plan. I was relieved to hear that. But I've been sewing like crazy. Um, there's a family in my neighborhood that has um, three children now. Um, a little girl who is... I don't know how old she is, but she wears an 18 to 24 month size. The little boy, I think he wears a three, and then there's a newborn baby. So, of course, that means that somebody I can sew for. So I already sewed some circle skirts. I sewed the little boy a pair of um, um, shorts last year, I think it was. And um, so, and that family in my church that had left, are now back. So they were gone for a year, maybe, maybe a little less than that, but now they're back. So um, I use the um, you know small pieces of fabric that are not big enough to make anything for myself, um, but I, I do have enough to make something for a little kid. So I'll just show you these. This pattern is from five out of four, I believe it's a, a free pattern. Um, Love Notions has one, I think it's called a skater skirt that's free. And then I have a simplicity pattern also that I got from a thrift store. The five out of four, the one I'm going to show you is for knit fabrics. But the ones I made, I used woven fabrics, but a stretch fabric for the waistband. So um, this fabric, this is a shiny kind of a leotard spandex um, kind of thing and um, so this was not hard to sew with this fabric interestingly I used to work for Red Cross um, as an RN on the Bloodmobile and we went to Wrangler which was just about 45 minutes from me 
And they, um, I was talking to one of the blood donors about sewing and she said, would you like some fabric? And I said, yeah. So she went back in and came out with a bunch of this kind of spandex stuff. And so that was um, in the 1990s. That's how old this fabric is. Uh, but anyway, easy, easy um, pattern. Um, comes out really nice. So that's that one. This was a thrifted fabric also. This is a woven with the knit waistband and I put a, what did I put on here? A poodle, I'll put a poodle on here. Uh, embroidered a poodle. All of these are the um, 18 to 24 month sizes. And then I made this one. This is from some of the fabric that I got um, fairly recently from <clears throat> CHKD that was in a bit big zip up thing. Um, so this is again a woven fabric with a uh, knit waistband and on this one I put a bunny. So these are going to go to the church family. All right, so let me just show you the fabric that I got most recently. This was when I went for my appointment. Um, this fabric is so beautiful. <coughs> this is this is a woven. I, you know, I don't even know what this is. It's it has some weight to it, um, and there are probably. Oh my goodness, probably um, five or six yards. Um, it's very drapey. I'll be right back. Back to where I was. So this is very, um, it's weighty, but it's very drapey. Um, I think that this would be drapey enough to use for a pair of um, Palazzo pants. Um, and I just bought from Love Notions, can't think of the name of the pants pattern, but I will, hold on. It's called the Summer K Pants and Shorts. Um, and it calls for a rayon-like fabric um, with drape. So I, um, I don't know, I'm thinking about that. It, uh, you know, there are so many options with Love Notions patterns. Um, I like the way, I think they call it a tulip bottom. It's a capri pant version. Uh, and then of course the um, full length and a shorts version. And I haven't really looked at the directions that much, but I think I saw something about making a mock-up using the shorts pattern first to make sure that the uh, that there aren't any issues with the crotch. So, um, you know, I might do that with some other fabric because I know that is an issue and um, I don't know if that would mean making the crotch a little bit longer. I had that happen to me with a five out of four pants pattern and um, I don't know, I didn't know how to correct it and I just gave the pants away because it was just, not a good look. Okay, so let me show you some more fabric. This I also picked up from the thrift store on Wednesday. This is a beautiful crepe. It's in navy blue. Um, it's just fabulous. And I think I have... Um, probably two and a half yards of this. It's just, it's a lovely color. Um, it's a little transparent or translucent, but you know, I don't think it's enough to have a lining. I think that whatever I make, and this would actually work for those pants as well. I also, because of that Love Notion sale, I also bought the Sonata dress and I forgot the other dress, the newest dress that they have out that's for a knit. This one, um, 
somebody went around the edges of this and surged it, I imagine, so that it didn't fray. But this is a nicely, um, it's another crepe. It's a, um, this color is called Mediterranean Blue. And the only reason I call it that is because <clears throat> I used to have a uniform store and that was the color I think Crest called it that and maybe some other companies as well. Um, but this is lovely. It's, um, this could be anything from dress to pants to a skirt to whatever. So um, it's all washed and, and everything. And this is stuff that I bought a while ago that I just didn't buy the other day. So hold on, I'll go through it. It's nothing spectacular, but it's still pretty nice. I think this came in two pieces, and I think I already showed you the this fabric the first time. And this is a, um, it's a knit that doesn't have a lot of stretch, but it has some stretch. And there are probably two yards, maybe a little bit more here. For, for all of the fabric that I'm showing you now, plus what I showed you before, I paid $15 for. The fabric I showed you, um, those three pieces I showed you at first, I paid, I think it was $2 a, a piece for each one, so $6 for, for all those. Um, this is a lovely knit. It looks kind of like a rib knit. There's not a lot of stretch here. It's purple. I'll show you the stretchiness. I would almost, you know, treat this as a ponte, um, but it's very nice. Probably about four yards here. This fabric was in that zip up thing, so you know I couldn't take it out, but it's it's not my type of fabric. Um, you know, I don't wear colors like this or stripes like this, but you know, it's pretty. Um, it's a woven. It almost looks like a um, percale. It's a polyester. Um, it's a shirt weight. I don't really wear, you know, button-up shirts very much. So there's probably three yards here. Not sure. If you have any suggestions for this, let me know. Um, it almost looks like a bed sheet, but it's not. I mean, you can see that it's um, a piece of fabric. This to me looks like a canvas. It's uh, white. There's probably a good three yards here. It's woven with um, no stretch in it. Yeah, I don't know what I would make with that. Um, I don't know. This is very similar. This is not the same fabric that I just showed you. It is, this looks more like a twill, and there's probably just a yard or so. Uh, she did, whoever had this cut into it a little bit. But you know, this would make a nice um, pillow or a uh, tote bag. The, this, you know, because it's a heavier weight, it takes embroidery really well. I think this is a poplin. It's a russet color. It's a reddish brown. There's not a lot here. Don't know what, um, if I could fit anything out of myself. Maybe a pair of shorts, but I probably wouldn't wear a pair of shorts uh, out of a out of a poplin. Uh, I don't know. But um, certainly enough for something for a uh, little kid. So I have to think about that. This is a denim piece. There's no stretch. It's just all denim, maybe a yard of this. It's not real heavy. Um, you know, it's not like a rigid denim. 
This piece is really pretty. It's a denim with um, apples on there. I had to think what, what type of fruit that was. It, oh, you know what? I bet it's cherries. Um, but this is really nice. It's, again, not a rigid denim. Um, and there's probably a good two or three yards here. I can probably figure out something to do with that. More denim. I think this is very similar to the last piece of denim that I showed you. Um, and I have one more that's really interesting. This is an amazing piece of fabric. I have no idea what to do with it. When I first saw it in the bag, because I did unzip it, it was in like one of those comforter bags, you know, that's, um, you know, kind of, you know, this deep and, you know, the kind that a comforter comes in. And when I first unzipped it and kind of looked through the fabrics, I saw this and all I saw was um, this. And I thought, wow, that looks pretty. I can do something with that. It's a woven. But when I got home and took everything out to wash, uh, to wash, it it is actually a border print. Can you see that? I mean, that is it's gorgeous. So the border runs not with the grain, but across the grain. Um, I don't know, and oh my gosh, there's so much of it. There's probably, let's see, one, two, right, five yards. Um, I don't know, I don't know what to do with that. I know I could make a skirt and, um, and use the border. Um, you know, you have a limited time um, to wear it because of the fall theme. But, you know, you could use it, I think, as a tablecloth or even a table runner. I don't know. I'm open to suggestions for that fabric. For me, I think, clothing-wise, it would be of limited use. But for a little kid, a little skirt or something, um, maybe that would work. I don't know. So that's it. I am having coffee with two with two of our nuns who left five years ago to go back to Los Angeles. They are now coming here for a visit and uh, they called to let me know and asked if I could meet them for coffee at 10 o'clock. So that's my plan. Um, and I have two small gifts for them. I miss them so much. They were such an asset to this area. Um, so um, that's it, and I will talk to you later. I'll keep you posted on you know, what I'm making. Um, you know, I, I'm always sewing. There is rarely a day that goes by that I don't sew. So I hope you all have a good week, and I will talk to you later on. Bye-bye.